You're watching Runtime, your finger on the pulse of the software world. I'm Lainey Brown. And I'm Luke Massey. Welcome to the show. Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about Rightly. So, uh, Lainey, could you tell us maybe a little bit about what Rightly is? Rightly is an online word processor, a lot like MS Word, but with the Web 2.0 technologies. Okay, and what exactly is Web 2.0? What does it's mean? a set of technologies put together that makes your online website act just like your desktop. So uh, it basically works just like MS Word. Mm, somewhat. It's got a lot of the same like applications and items and icons and such, but a little bit more user-friendly, not so complicated. So why, why would you want to use it instead of Word then? What are the advantages there? It's, it's online. It's online. You can okay. use it online. You can use it anywhere, unlike the... MS Word, which is just on your desktop, and the way that you can get it out to other people is just by either printing it or emailing it. This way, you can collaborate with others online. Cool. All right. So you can like work together on stuff and share things back and forth. Yeah. Nifty. Um, so what are some other interesting features of Writely? There's blogging, which okay. is still got a couple little bugs. Not very up to date, up right. to par. Well, it's still in beta. That's and to be expected. Collaboration. Collaboration. And the revision right. history. Revision history. So, Lainey, tell us a little more about the uh, the revision features. Well, there's a drop-down menu that you can go to that says revisions, and you can compare the, the different versions that everybody's working on and uh, the different changes that are between them, what time it happened, who made the changes, and, you know, compare and see what you want to do. And, Cool. Go from All there. Right. Okay, let's say I've, I've you know, been collaborating on this document with some friends of mine, and maybe we wrote a short story. It's really good, and we want everyone to see it. So how would I go about actually getting it out of Riley? You, know? well, you save it first. You can print it. There's a little print button. Okay. Um, uh, go underneath the file menu, and you can save it as an HTML, like a web document, okay. or an RTF, an MS write format, MS Word. Nice. You know, open office with uh, Linux, and uh, there's the PDF, which is just your average format that any dummy can use. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, so it sounds like it, you can it's get it out of here in a lot of different ways. Yeah. It supports a lot of formats. You can well, print. let's see. What uh, what are what do I need if I want to use Rightly? You need the internet. Okay. So internet you can connect. Connection. It has to be Web 2.0 compatible. Um, some of the browsers aren't quite compatible with Web 2.0, like oh. Safari and Netscape, the, the Mozilla and the Internet Explorer, Opera, and Firefox. Those work quite well with that. And okay, so I can use Internet Explorer, Mozilla, Firefox, or Opera, yeah. but not uh, Safari or Netscape. Kind of lacking in that area. Okay, cool. Great. Well, that sounds really interesting. Uh, I hope we get to. I hope it gets out of beta soon, and we can actually start using it. It oh. sounds like a good application. You can use it now. Oh. But um, it has to be like an invited thing to get someone that's already collaborating on something. They send you an email invite, and then so kind of like what they there. did with Gmail. Kind of. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, we're gonna take a short break here. We'll be back in just a minute. We're gonna do some news and information. Don't go anywhere. Fighting continues in the Middle East. Little Green Footballs has done it again. The West Nile virus confirmed in Peoria. And scandal and broil Tom DeLay takes his name off the ballot. Hi, I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat. Beirut has come under renewed attack this week, with Israeli jets pounding the city's southern suburbs. There were further airstrikes in the north of the country, near the border with Syria, which left seven people dead and one wounded. Charles of Little Green Footballs has once again exposed old media inaccuracies. LGF, the blog responsible for discrediting of CBS News and the Rathergate scandal, has exposed a Reuters photographer as having enhanced photographs of bombings in Beirut to make them look as if more damage had occurred. Runtime will go into more depth on this story next week, so don't miss it. In other news, the Illinois Department of Public Health says to date, 48 of the state's 102 counties have reported positive test results for West Nile virus in mosquitoes and birds. Two human cases in Cook County and St. Clair County have been reported. While only 2 of 10 people contracting West Nile virus show symptoms, the disease can be serious or fatal. Former House Majority Leader Tom DeLay has withdrawn his name from the November ballot. In a letter to Secretary of State Roger Williams, a copy of which was sent by email to the Houston Chronicle, he asked that his name be removed as the GOP nominee for the 22nd Congressional District. 
In 2005, DeLay was indicted on several charges of campaign finance violation. DeLay denounced the charges as a sham and an act of political retribution perpetuated by his opponents. He added, I have done nothing wrong and I have violated no law, no regulation, no rule of the House. For other news, information, and entertainment, head on over to PottedMeat.com. I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat. Welcome back to News and Views. On our time. Okay, Lenny, so what's our first uh, story for today? Windows on your desktop, windows in your face, windows in your pocket, windows every place. Okay, and what she's referring to is uh, some people have figured out how to put windows on a jump drive, a little piece of flash memory with a USB connector on one end, and you can put windows on here and boot your computer with it when it breaks. Ah, Which that happens. Which run Windows, yes. As Lenny knows, it happens a lot. So um, the way it works basically is you need a, a flash drive of about 256 megs or more, and uh, there's a program called BART-PE, which uh, stands for PE, stands for Pre-Install Builder. Ah. So what it does basically is it takes all the necessary parts from Windows, compiles them together, and puts them, well, wherever you tell it. And if you say put it on the flash drive, then it will. Does so, it fix it or is it just reboot it? No, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fix it. It just, um, you have to have a working Windows to do this. Ah. But once you, uh, once you have done it, then if your Windows installation breaks, you can boot your computer still and fix your registry or remove the viruses or whatever happened. So it's, it's a pretty handy little tool to have, and uh, you can get BART PE Builder from www.nu2.nu forward slash PE Builder. But I can make one of my own, right? Yes, you can okay. make one on your own. You just need the software. And let's see, our next story here is about, oh, this is a good one, Yahoo and MSN to join IM communities. It's about damn time. It is about damn time, <laughs> yes. This has been, we've been waiting for this for a long time. And it, I think AOL tried to do it with someone back in, well, a few years back, and it didn't work out. Yeah. But uh, the, the basic idea here is that you will be able to talk to people using the Yahoo Instant Messenger that have MSN accounts, or you'll be so, able to talk to people with Yahoo accounts using the MSN Messenger. A bunch of people are all in one. Right. You don't, so have, don't, have, sit there you don't have to have turn on all these different, different programs. Yeah. And well, of course, you could use something like Trillion or Game, and you don't have to one use one program anyway. But most people don't know about that, and this is a big advantage for them. And another advantage is you can use the voice chat as well. So you can voice chat between MSN Messenger and Yahoo Messenger. I like that's, talking. That's a big thing. Yeah, voice chat's fun. People like hearing my voice. People it's do nice. like hearing your voice. It's a very nice voice. And let's see. Ooh. Do you want to do this one? Argo, the po iPod killer. It's not your washing machine. Not my washing machine. My uh, my iPod got washed, so it no longer works. But this is a different kind of iPod killer. Yeah. This is um, a Microsoft product. It's called the Argo. Another one. <clears throat> yes, another Microsoft product. And what it's what they're trying to do with it is basically to take over the huge market that Apple has created with their iPod music player. Yeah, they're just jealous. Yes, they're jealous, but that's their business model. I mean, you know, they wait for someone to invent a good idea, then they either buy or steal it. But so, it seems to work. Yeah, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, Microsoft definitely is not broke. And, okay, our final story for the evening. Do you want to do this one? No, this one's for you. Okay. Uh, the headline is, RIAA will drop case if you point out that an IP address isn't a person. Oh, okay, yeah, I see why it's for me. Um, okay, two things we need to explain real quick. RIAA is the Recording Industry Artist Association, and what they do is they go around protecting uh, copyrights for various recording they artists. pop you if you steal their files. That's right. If you are illegally sharing music that is not yours, you don't have permission to share, then they will get you. But? They've been suing a lot of people. But, well, it... The, the way they've been doing this is by recording IP addresses. And an IP address is just a, a number that you're assigned when you're on the Internet. It identifies your computer on the Internet. And they're pretty much assigned at random. But the, uh, the point of this article is that you can't tell who is 
doing the sharing, just having an IP address. Yeah, like say, all it really all it really tells you is who paid for the internet access. Especially if you have like a Wi-Fi network. Right. If you have a Wi-Fi network, then I mean, obviously those are easy to break it. into. Even if they're well secured, they're still very easy to break into, and uh, you can't really control who does that. And most people are not, you know, network security experts by yeah. any means. I'm yeah. not. And I have tons of people over at my house all the time. Anyway. I think the people at your house don't count because the theory there is that you can, you know, control what they do. You can say, hey, stop sharing files on my computer. But they don't really have any proof that someone didn't break into your network and share files illegally. Ah. And this defense has actually been used successfully in uh, California and Oklahoma. And both times uh, the defendant was able to get the RIAA to drop the case against them by saying that, well, you can't prove that it was me. I mean, you don't know. Someone could have broken into my network. And um, that, that worked in both of those cases. Yeah, they'll figure out a way. Probably eventually, but for now, if you are accused of illegally sharing files, this could be a good defense for you. Yeah, but now, we're not suggesting that you right, no, don't, don't share illegal share files. files. If, you, if you have a file you and your buddies made, you want to share it, that's great. Yeah. Don't, don't but, go share P. Diddy or... Uh, Michael Jackson or anything, because they'll get you. Yeah. But we're just about out of time here. <gasps> oh, wait. One quick buzzkill. Buzzkill. Okay. Um, what this is, is we're going to uh, take a buzzword, and we're going to explain what it means. The so, word of the day. Word of the day. Long tail. Long tail. Okay, long tail. Long tail is a business plan or business model that takes a longer amount of time to pay off. In other words, you're not going to be profitable for maybe a couple years as to oppose to, you know, like three to 12 months. And uh, a good example of this is Amazon.com. Amazon.com is a huge online retailer. They sell... Four years. Yes, all kinds of stuff. And it took them four years before they actually started making a profit, even though they were selling tons of stuff. So uh, that's that's long tail. And, of course, the opposite of that is short, short tail. tail. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have here on Runtime. I'm Lainey Brown. And I'm Luke Massey. Uh, we'll see you next week.